before the episode starts, I just want to say that I'm sorry for, well, kind of fucking up at some points. Uh, when I recorded this episode, it was quite late, so forgive me. And now have fun with the episode. Hey guys and welcome to the episode which many of you awaited. It's the episode about graphical user interfaces. And before we start the episode, we are going to have some do some presets to to just make it a bit easier for us. Like design the thing we want to do first, think about it first, how should it work and what should it do. First thing we're gonna do is create a new text document and just call it something. I will call this GUI, just for the sake of randomness. And then what we want to write in here is the thing it should do. So we want to make, um, make a window with a label and button inside. The label shows how many times button was pressed. So that's the basic idea of what we want to do. Now what we need, we could maybe write something like idea and then um, needed um, we need a window and inside the window we need a button, a label um, and then we need to make it that when button is pressed, um, gets clicked, update label to show how many times button was clicked. And that is basically everything about our little thing we are going to do. Yes. So let's just keep that for this. Let's keep that open and put it somewhere, maybe maybe you can even make it smaller. And now we need one more thing that will be our screen resolution. To find out your screen resolution if you don't know it, right click on your desktop, click on screen resolution and then there should be resolution is and then your resolution. For me that is 1920 times 1080. So go into your favorite program for art or designing, create a new file and make it exactly the same size as your screen size. So for me I would need to do it one, a width of 1920 and a height of 1080. Go on and create that particular file thing and make it bigger. So if we want to do, we want to have a window. So let's first design the window. In GIM, this is pretty easy. Just click on this thing on the top left, then select the area. Now we will make. Uh, we want to. Yeah, let's do this big. It's a very big, but that doesn't matter. And now what we're going to do? It like here. Yeah. Now click on uh, select, and then click on border. Uh, select the size and fill it out with a color. And this will be these space where will you we will be working on and that is our window and now create another now we have inside of that we create a button uh, this button will be about the size and let's just fill it out with a nice red maybe and on top of the button there will be a text um, or something like that, that was just some random thing. And on the right side, right here, um, times button was pressed and then zero. 
And that is basically our little design. It's it's nothing special. It's not it's nothing good <laughs> because it's made by me. Um, but we want to import that into MTA. So how do we do that? First of all, we're going to need many functions. We're going to use uh, the GUI create window function, the GUI create button, the GUI create label. We're going to use the event on client GUI click, and we're going to use the function GUI set text. So first of all, we're going to need to create a window. A window will look a bit like this, depending on your style of MTA. And you see, we have some um, arguments, which will be the X position, the Y position, the width, and the height. But before we go to that, go into your resources folder and create a new resource. We are going to call this GUI. Make a meta dot XML, meta.xml and just open the meta tag, close the meta tag and then write script source equals climac uh, let's call this file cgui.lua of type client because you can only make uh, this graphical interface as client side and save it now create your cgui.lua and open it. No, thanks. Uh, first thing we are going to do is we are going to get the screen resolution of the player. So just write local sx and sy equals gui get screen size. Well, get screen size. Open bracket and close the bracket. And now we have the screen size of the player stored in a variable, or in two variables. Now we are going to write our scale, which will be scale X, and we're going to write our scale Y, which will be for my case 1920, and the Y scale is 1080. Now I could also write scale width and scale height, but as you know, um, computers work in vectors, in 2D vectors, like 2D is just X and Y, starting from the top left. Don't forget that in Lua everything starts from the very top left, and the very top left is 0,0, zero always, on every screen. It won't change from screen to screen, that just won't happen. So, as we see on GIMP perfectly where everything starts, yes we do. Um, so, as you know, now we have the screen size of the user, and we want our si uh, scale uh, screen size into the uh, into two vari variables. Um, after we did that, we are going to create the window, and as you can see, there are um, six arguments, which will be the x position, the y position, the width, the height. The text of the title bar, like this, this one, it's my window, and relative. Before we start scripting, I'm going to explain relative. Um, wait a second, we don't need this. We need this for our GUI thing. Sorry, I'm right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Um, as you can read, this size, uh, this is whether the sizes and positioning are relative. If this is true, then all x, y with a floats must be between 0 and 1, representing sizes positions as a fraction of the screen size. If false, then the size and coordinates are based on client's resolution, accessible using GUI get, get screen size. See? Okay. Now, we are going to set that to true, because if we set this to true, then it will look exactly the same on every screen, and we want to look our window the same on every screen. That's just something we want to do. But how do we do that? First of all, we're going to need to find out where our window starts. So this will be 0 uh, on Y0 and scroll close and this will be the X of 535. I'm, I was confused because of German. You have, to, you have to count the numbers a bit different in German. So now we have to do one thing, open your calculator, because you are going to use that often. 
So, um, get the position you just had, 535, and divide it by your screen resolution. This will result up in a number between 0 and 1. And for me that will be 0 0.278 and many many more. So we're going to write local GUI underscore window. Oh, let's, call, let's just call it, yeah, GUI underscore window equals GUI create window. Now the X position, so go on your calculator 0 0.278 and 0 0.278 it starts on v0 y so just type 0 because when y is 0 or x is 0 you just can't type 0 that will be the same on every screen resolution as i just said now we need the width uh the logic thing will be we just go on the right side right here uh, uh here we go and go on this thing which will be 1306 so just write that right here and now there's a little problem if we would divide this by our screen resolution we would get 0 0.6802 da 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 so 0 0.60 but you know the width does not mean the end exposition exposition width means um the size from the start position of our GUI window, so from 0 0.278. And we're just going to have to do some logical stuff that is just by typing 0 0.68 minus our starting position, and that is 0 0.402. 0 0.402, here we go, and now if, uh, that will work. Now we have to go to the top left, uh, to the most um, bottom position, which will be on pixel 212, as you can see on the bottom left right here. So 212, uh, let's just come on that out, and now we're going to write 212 by 1080, because that's our Y resolution. And now we see 0 0.196. So right, 0 0.196. We do not have to um, minus the y normal, uh, starting y position right now because the starting y position is zero. And as you know, um, if it's zero, you, you just if we would type this minus zero, it would still be the same value. So after we got that, we got our positions, and now just type in the title window like. Uh, button clicker, there we go, button clicker, and set the last to true because everything we wrote inside this is relative. Now let's start the resource, uh, restart GUI, and as you can see, this looks kind of a beautiful, like a bit at least. And now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create the button and we are going to set the button relative to its parent and its parent will be our window. So let's go to the GUI create button um, I don't know, button function. And as you can see we have a new argument and that is the parent argument. And as you can read, if the relative argument is true, sizes and positioning will be made relative to this parent. So we're gonna have to find out how um, how wide and how tall our y, uh, our parent is. So we're starting on um, we're starting on this position right here. So we could just do uh, uh, this little cal calculation. No, we can't do that calculation because I'm kind of stupid. Um, I look, we're going to we're going lower for some reason. Um, we are going to. Oh God, here we go. That is the calculation I wanted. So the starting position is exactly this. Uh, let's just write that down. Why the fuck is it like this? Okay, so just. Make open a comment and start uh, write x equals 55.04, y equals zero, 
uh, width equals now one two one nine uh, one thousand nine hundred and twenty times zero dot four zero two type seven seven one dot eight four because that is our width in pixels, and now our height is one thousand and eighty times zero dot one nine six, and that is two hundred eleven dot six eight. Perfect. Now we've got our pixel size of every, um, how's it called, position and size, you know. And now we are going to... Oh, by the way, to actually find out how... No, that is with. Okay, no, never mind. Uh, now we're going to create le local GUI underscore button equals gui create button and now as you can see it takes the same arguments x y with faith text relative and parent so first of all we're going to need the x star position and it is the 585 and now we're going to write um, the following thing we're going to need the foot size am i right yeah, we're going to need the full size. Um, so just write size equals and now five 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 four four plus seven seven one dot eight four, and that would be one three two two dot two eight uh, times two one one dot six eight. Now just round that up because that's just how MTA works. Because pixels can't be uh, um, float values. Pixels are always integers. So they just has to be, have to be full numbers. So now we've, after we got our size, we have to divide the 585 by our x. So 585 by, oh my god, I can read it, 1322. Now this position is 0 0.442. The y position is, let's find out, 21. So 21 by 211. 0 0.099 Then our width is uh, da, 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 our width huh. Let's find that out uh, da, da, da. Uh, This starts at 834 So 834 I will write that down here 834 and now just we're going to need the uh, 834 by 1322 and now our um, answer minus 0 0.442 and we get 0 0.188 so 0 0.19 round it up and for the y uh, we have, let's find out, goes down to uh, to 150. So we're going to write 150 divided by 211 and that minus 0 0.099 and that is 0 0.611 or 0 0.62. Now the text on the button will be Click me, it will be relative and the parent will be GUI underscore window. So, as you can now see, we have our X and uh, our button inside the window. Now, let's see if it works. Uh, restart GUI. Here we go, we have our button on the position in the middle. But I think we did not want it to be right in the middle, did we? No, it should be a bit more to the left, so let's see if. What happened? Uh, what did we do wrong with our calculation? Uh, five eight. Wait a second. Okay. Uh, five eight five. Five eight five. Here we go. Oh yeah. I think I know what I did wrong. Um, five eight five. Five one three two two. Yeah, I know what I did wrong. Uh, what I did wrong was that I divided the x right here by the size but I did not directly think of that the um, window 
has its own size and it, it's kind of complicated. I, 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 at the moment, I don't even get that shit. So we're just, but I, I'm okay with with the button in the middle. Well, kind of middle. So um, yeah. Da, da, da. What we can do is maybe five eight five 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 zero. Uh, 063 063 Well, whoops <laughs> Oh, fuck Fuck me, that was loud And now if we will basically start the GUI, it should be on the right exposition But now we have to divide our width thingy again because now you see it, it will look a bit yeah, Well, it is not restarting or did I not save it? I did not save it. As you can see right now... Oh no, no it, wor it works perfectly, yeah, correct. I was thinking of DX draw rectangle thingies at the moment. Kind of. Um, so now that works exactly like we wanted. We It's on the right position. Uh, I'm sorry for the little failure at this little part right here. And I'm sorry that I'm not a pro with the MCA GUIs. I I rarely use them. I have my own um, DirectX drawing library for drawing windows and buttons and everything, so I don't need this kind of stuff. But for the sake of the tutorials, I'm still gonna try to explain you them as good as I can. So we are going to create the label um, on the right of the text. GUI thingy, so we're going to do basically exactly the same again. Local GUI underscore label equals G wait equals GUI create label, and now instead of 0 0.063, just type 0 0.1. Uh, we're not going to use the position we did on here because I just randomly chosen I uh, have chosen one. We can also do 0 0.2. Uh, starting position of 0 0.1 You could also write 0 0.1 right here um, A height of 0 0.4 And a width of 1 Now the label has times, button was clicked That's 0, it's relative to its parent And its parent is the GUI window now if you would restart the, the resource, you can see a time button was clicked, zero. What is on the button? That is because um, if we add this and this together, we get a value of 1.2. So let's just make it zero. Start, let the start position be at 0 0.4. We restart it and yeah, that looks, that looks okay. So you, see, you can also just test around it and Reset your resource as many as, as often as you want to if you do not want to design your um, thing first, whatever you're gonna make. So now we're gonna need to show the cursor first. That is a very basic command, and that is just show cursor and then true. Very easy, nothing hard, nothing to explainable there. Restart, and now we can see our cursor. Uh, drag the GUI around, click on the button, uh, very very easy. You can also put it outside of a window and then get it up again. And yeah, that, that's just so easy there. We can also resize this. As you can see, yeah, it kind of moves with it. Uh, we can also disable that. As you can see on the wiki, we can... Uh, da, 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 here we go. Uh, we can set the GUI as invisible, we can change the text, we can change the size, uh, the property, and the property, there are many many properties like, uh, da, 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 I think they put everything right here. Uh, I don't know at the moment, yeah. And as you can see, these are all the different properties of the, um, of each, well, thing depending on button checkbox. You can see Y X position, X rotation, X Y rotation, Z rotation. So you can actually change that, which is um, kind of new for me. I never used that one. Kind of cool feature. Um, 
let's go back to this down here. We can enable that, uh, we can, I think there was also something where you can um, allow it to be draggable or not. Let's see, drag, no, move, able, no, nothing like that. But I know you could, maybe on the window, it was only on the window, I, I have no, I have no fucking clue because I never work with these things. Once again, I'm sorry that I'm doing a tutorial for things I don't really know much about, but many people requested it, so I was like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. Uh, on the future, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to work with the uh, cool drawing stuff, the uh, DX draw rectangle and DX draw image, and how to do cool stuff with that. We can close our picture for now because we got everything we need. But now let's continue with adding an event to um, the button. And as you know, we can now close our windows. We open for the um, help. And now we can see on client UI click. So what do we, uh, what are the parameters? We get, uh, we get the button that was clicked with uh, the mouse button for sure. The state. And as you can see, please note currently only the update supported. So keep that in mind. And the X and the Y of our um, uh, mouse. Okay, so let's just copy the event handler out of here and edit it to our um, to our button stuff. So uh, um, the first thing is on client GUI. Click as you know from the event handler tutorial. The second thing is not root this time, but uh, the button that was pressed. So we type GUI button. The third thing is um, the function. Like you already know, uh, for this will be this will be the count clicks function. Now create the function count clicks with no parameters because we don't need the parameters. Or maybe we need the button parameter, and we are going to we can delete this one now, but make a new variable local clicks equals zero. And now count clicks. Um, if button equals left, so if the left mouse button was pressed, then do uh, let's do clicks equals clicks plus one, and then type in set gy um, text. Oh, wait, let me. How was the comment called? Ah, gy set text. Yeah, fuck me. Gy set text. Then the gy. Uh, element which will be our label and the text so times button was clicked and then dot dot clicks and now if we uh, would reset our resource click as you can see now our times button was clicked gets updated and updated and you could do something like I don't know you know these clicker games like cookie click on everything you could do something like that with this now with this knowledge I just gave you, you could do something like that. And with the help of the wiki, because on the wiki you can see many things like GUI set visible, uh, is checkbox input active for whatever you're going to need that one. Um, on the GUI, on the MTA wiki you can see enough things about everything, about checkboxes, combo boxes, edit fields, grid lists, memos, uh, progress bars, radio buttons, scroll bars, scroll panes, static images, tap panels, tabs, text labels, windows, and web browser. Did you guys know that on MTA 1.5 there are going to be um, web browsers? I am so fucking hyped for them, because they are just, wow, that's just something I really, really like to see in MTA, and they are adding it finally, so that's epic. So you can create your own web browsers in your server, and that's epic. Just, wow. Okay, um, what we could also add to our script else, um, else if a button is not the left button, clicks equals clicks minus one. And now to make everything a bit easier, copy this line and paste it down here. That's just some logical thinking because first of all, um, update the clicks value and then on the, uh, after we updated the value of our clicks, 
set the new text. So now if we reset our resource, oh, what was that? Oh, I did not set that resource, that's why. And now left click, right click, right click, right click, and it goes into the minus. And if we left click again, it goes up, and down, and up, and down. So yeah, that, that's basically everything for the um, GUI um, episode. But I'm going to show you guys one more very useful function that you will probably need at some point at least. Um, so we will call that function function um, update value then the very no let's uh, update oh wait let's call it check boundaries uh, then we then we need a value a minimum and a maximum and with that function we are going to check if our value is inside two in, inside the boundaries of two variables like 0 and 100 or 0 and 10. So to do that we are going to do the following. Um, return math dot, I think this was lower, something math dot math dot, oh my god I fucking forgot how the function was called. I just wrote it yesterday and I fucking forgot it already. Uh, you know what? It was not math dot. You know what? We can luckily we can Google that. Lower math dot, and then yeah, it was. Oh my god, uh, it was math dot min and math dot max. So how the fuck should I, could I forget these? So we are going to math dot min, and then we need the minimum. Uh, no, wait. Not the minimum one. We are going to use. Let's just write zero here. Maximum. Because the maximum is our maximum. And now we need the first value, which will be math.max of value, um, minimum and value. And now that's every. That's just the function. And I'm sorry for kind of hanging up again because I forgot the min and max. I, I don't know I could, how I could forget that. Um, so as you can see, this function checks if the value value is inside of the boundaries of minimum and maximum. So math it returns the minimum of the maximum of the minimum and the current value and of the maximum. So. We, we could do clicks equals uh, check boundaries then clicks 0 and 10 do the same with this one now we start click 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 nothing happens and why is that did I put a value yeah it looks um, yeah, I I kind of forgot some, oh my god, don't fucking ask me how, uh, uh, uh. clicks equals clicks plus, plus one, you, you see guys, never program when it's late, just don't do it, don't fucking do it, and as you can now see, now everything works, uh, I will tell you what I did wrong in a second, so I can see, we can't, we can't still go higher than 10, and if I right click, we are going to still upper. Because I don't pass one here. Um, let's see, maximum was 10. Yes, it was. So, yeah, I forgot to do clicks equals. You, you see, never program when it's late. That's just very stupid. Now we can't go higher, uh, lo higher than 10 and lower than 0. Perfect. Okay, uh, I'm sorry for this kind of fucked up episode. I, I've tried to make it just look as good as possible, but I've kind of fucked up because it's it's late. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for fucking up so many times, but I 
think you understood the basic concept of everything. Let's see how many... Uh, 26 minutes. Um, it will be a bit short on YouTube because I cut out a few parts. So don't wonder why it's like, oh, on your screen it shows me uh, more than 36 minutes, but on YouTube it's only 44. 34, not 40. Um, so yeah, sorry for this kind of fucked up episode. But I hope you got uh, the basic understanding of how GUIs work. And um, by the way, if we would remove this, but, uh, uh, this um, parent res parent thingy, then in game it would look like this. So that's just because if we set it to a parent, the relative argument, uh, the positions right here, are um, relative to its parent. Don't forget that. Okay, if you still have any questions, if I did explain, uh, did forgot to explain anything, if you guys have some, just some more specific questions about any of this or any of everything else MTA related, ask me on the MTA forum, on Skype, on, on YouTube, on wherever you want to. I'm going to look at the question, I'm going to answer the question. And if you have any problems or something, you can also just contact me and I, I will try to help you as best, uh, as good as I can. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching this episode. Once again, I'm sorry for kind of fucking it up very much. But you know, at, at least I can say it's kind of late. <laughs> so that's my excuse. <laughs> oh, I'm so lonely. <laughs>